Just start by writing the formula. Okay, if you copy it from the formula sheet, surface area is pi times d squared. That's the best one here because you're looking for the diameter. All right, blue. So it's that. You're trying to solve for that, and what you're given is surface area. So you can put it in there. You substitute the one you, the ones you know, and then you can solve for the one you don't know. So if you put 459.96 and you say it equals pi times d squared, that's an equation you can solve now, right? Okay, you can solve that equation. If you haven't yet done this question, maybe you want to write something down or maybe you don't. It's up to, up to you, I guess. Start with the formula, sub in the numbers. This is, this is a good strategy for any of these ones, right? Start with a formula, either one from the formula sheet or one you make up yourself. Okay, start with a formula, sub in known values, and then solve for the unknown value, right? That's a good strategy for any of them here. Maybe I should have separated that a little bit here. Change that so we can see the difference. How do you solve that kind of equation? How do you go about solving this? It says d squared times pi equals that weird number. How do you go about solving it? You got to try and isolate the variable. We're going to try and isolate this. So there's two things that have been done there. It's been squared and multiplied by pi. You got to undo those things, and you learn in grade eight and nine how to do that. If it's been squared and then multiplied by pi, to undo those things, the first thing you're going to do is divide by pi, because that's going to cancel that out. You don't have to write that if you don't want. You know how in trig we just moved, like if it was multiplied on one side, we moved it and divided it on the other side. You know in trig if you had if you, you rearranged the equations. If this pi is multiplied on this side, you might prefer to just think about it as I can divide on the other side. So if you want to change it like that, you can, right? And you can just write d squared has to be 459.96 divided by pi. If you like to write divide by pi and cross it out, you're welcome to do that too, whatever you like. Okay, whatever makes it, whatever makes it click for you. And then if it says d squared is that number over here, you could actually divide that and get what number it is, but I'm just going to leave it till the end, so I don't have to worry about. Um, I don't have to worry about it till the end. If it says d squared over here, how am I going to get the d by itself? How do I undo this squaring? Yeah, square root, right? So d happens to be. And if again, if you like writing this, you can write square root of both sides to cancel out that. If you don't like writing that then you can just write the result, right? D is the square root of 459.96 divided by pi. And then you can go to your calculator. I like leaving the calculator till the very end. But you could work out the numbers along the way if you wanted. All right, so if you're trying to enter this properly, 459.96 divide by, I would use the pi button on the calculator rather than just putting in 3.14. So you got square root of that whole thing, 12.1 roughly. 12.1. So you can say approximately, what are the units on that? Centimeters? If you started with centimeters, you're going to get centimeters. Now here's a here's a higher level thing to, to think about. At the beginning here, this was centimeters squared, right? This said centimeters squared. This is actually centimeters squared. If you carry the units through, dividing by pi, there's no units that you're dividing by. But when you do the square root here, if you do the square root of centimeters squared, what units are just going to end up here, even if you didn't realize what they are? What are they going What are you going to end up with? Centimeters. If you have something that's, you know, 
16 centimeters squared and you do the square root of that, it's four centimeters, right? You can, you can, you, you can kind of analyze the units as you go to think about whether the units make sense when you get to something, all right? That's that, uh, that's a kind of a working backwards question. There's some other ones in your, uh, that, uh, that you're going to run across that, um, Let's have a look in that section, actually, because you're going to come across one. I think that let's come across one here. Um, one of the assignment questions is that where it's a rectangular prism and you have to work backwards to figure out the width or something like that. You could do exactly the same thing as we just did. Write it, pick a formula, sub in the numbers you know, and then solve the equation. Uh, let's find out where this is then. It's section 2.2, which is right after this. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Um, where is it here? Somewhere. This one. Okay, that one's one of the ones I was thinking of. This is uh, something where you're working backwards. You're given the surface area, and it asks you to find an unknown here, right? It's the same thing. Come up with a formula for this, sub in all the numbers you know, like those two numbers, and then just leave the other one as a W. Look at what kind of an equation you have and try and solve for that variable. That's the that's a good strategy, right? Because sometimes you'll be saying surface area is, and you'll work about it with your stuff out over here, but in this case, you're going to be saying, well, I know the surface area is 6020, but there's going to be some stuff and there's going to be a W over here somewhere. And then you just try to solve for that variable. That's the strategy that I would say works well for this when you're working backwards. All right. For that question that we were just doing, I didn't actually uh, finish it, right? Because it actually says, what is the variation in the, the diameter? I found the lower diameter. You could do the same thing with the other surface area to find the upper diameter, and then you can see how far apart they are, right? You can say it ranges from 12.1 to whatever. The other thing is, I didn't actually answer the question properly, but I think you can do the other side of that yourself pretty easily. This is not a similar question in that it's not asking you to figure out two things, but it does ask you to work backwards. Given the surface area, this is a backwards question where it says take the surface area. This time it says find the radius. You might have to choose. I'm not going to do this one for you, but you have to pick a different formula to make it easiest for yourself. Don't pick the one that says surface area is pi times d squared. Pick the other one. What does the other one say? What's the other formula? It would help if we were somewhat familiar with the formulas. Radius squared, but it's not just radius squared. It's because you need the 4 in there, right? Because it's 2 times the radius squared. That's where that 4 comes from. So if you're working with that thing, start with 4 pi r squared and just solve for the r, right? The last couple ones that you're working on there, like this one, we did talk about this at some point, but don't include any overlap. You know, like, Don't include that they're overlapped. Don't include a, there's no top to the cylinder. There's no bottom to the cone. Think about carefully what you're doing there. And then the same thing with this. This is a kind of a difficult one, too. You really have to think about it. You can't just say one, two, three cylinders and just write the formula for a cylinder, right? If you, if you look on the formula sheet, that's what it says for a cylinder. You can't just say there's three cylinders, so I'm going to do each one. You have to realize if they're stuck together, you're missing some of the surfaces in here, right? Just like when... Just like when these are stuck together, you're missing a couple of the surfaces. You're missing the bottom of the cone and the top of the cylinder. You have to think carefully, and you even have to think there's going to be some that I'm going to need to... I, I don't want to do the thinking for you in that question, but that's a difficult question, right? Can we get working on this and see where we get to? I'm going to stop you after a while, and we're going to talk about the first bit of 2.3. You should be aiming to get most of this, if not all of it, done pretty soon, right? Good chunk of it today.